Do you hate it when you have a print fail and it just doesn't print the rest of it due to a power failure or something stupid? Well today, I'm going to show you how to get the rest of your print so you can attach it and finish out that model without having to redo it completely. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video, as I said, we are going to be rescuing a print. So this is actually a pretty simple method that I use sometimes when I have a print fail due to a power failure, uh, runs out of PLA, um, even when sometimes when it has a sh layer shift and that bad layer will come off, um, to save a print so you don't have to throw a whole bunch away. And what do I mean by save a print? This week I had a power failure. <laughs> now I have CR10 V2s and C the CR10 and the CR10 V2s can resume on power failure as well as the Ender 3 V2, but the CR10 and the original Ender 3 cannot. So what happened to me, unfortunately, the power outage was for two hours. So basically I lost the print. <clears throat> now you can reprint it, just start from scratch. You know, this is not a lot of infill, not a lot of material here, but do you really want to start from scratch and lose all of this material? I mean, there's probably two or three dollars worth of material right here. Do you really just want to throw that in the garbage? No, there's no point. Now granted, did I reprint the part? Yeah, but you want to know what? My new printed part warped. So I didn't even get the new part. So what? <laughs> so I have a good base and a good foundation, but I'm missing the top piece. Well, I'm gonna show you how to get that top piece out of Kira so that you can use a 3D printing pen, super glue, modeling glue, whatever type of glue you wanna to use to get your full part. And so it is going to have a seam, so you'll need a filler of some kind as well. Um, the 3D printing pin will help fill that seam with PLA if you choose to do so. If you just choose to use heat to adhere it as well, is another method you can do. And then just a little bit of filler was the Vallejo filler. Uh, Tester has a pretty good uh, filler that you can put into the gaps. And then just a little bit of sanding, and you get your part back. And you don't lose all that material. But mainly, I'm going to show you how to get this. And the key to getting this is all millimeters. So the trick that I use is I have a ruler here that does mill that has centimeters on it. So Kira will let me put items below the x-axis, below the bottom axis, below the plate, and cut it off seamlessly. So what I've got to figure out is where, how high did I actually get on this print? So what I'll do is I will take my ruler in centimeters, figure out where my start spot is and where I stopped and get that number. And it is 12.1 centimeters. So basically centimeters down to millimeters, it's 122 centimeters or millimeters, sorry, millimeters. So basically we need to drop this down off the bill plate negative 122 millimeters and we should be able to get the rest of our part so we're going to hop over and we're going to do that so that we can get the entire piece see you guys over at the computer but before i do that if you're enjoying the content you find this information useful or just an awesome idea to just try out the try to save a print hit that subscribe button join the team that's what we're here for is to teach come up with new ideas and keep innovating so that you don't have wasted material and you have an easy time getting your 3d prints done so again, if you're out there, share the video with anybody you know wants to get into 3D printing, has an interest, or just fan some family. Share out the video. It does help the channel as well. I appreciate any help. And if you have questions, comments down below. Feel free to ask them about 3D printing. So let's hop over to the computer. All right. So like I said, we're at the computer. I've got the model back in Cura. Now, sometimes when I have Cura pulled up, one thing I'd recommend is before you slice and you save, the G code, go to file and save your STL that you reposition and put on your plate. Because you've turned it, you've twisted it and all that, you need that settings to stay correct. So save the STL the way you changed it. And that way, if you have to come back and make alterations, you have that file. Because when you make the G code, sometimes you can't change the G code. It just drives me nuts sometimes. So this is what I do. My process is I'll get a position, get it the way I like it. I'll go to file, save, save the STL, name it, alter the name slash altered. And then I will uh, 
slice and g-code it and save the g-code file. But, so, like I said, we're going to do some quick math. So it was 12.2 centimeters. Well, for every centimeter is 10 millimeters, so times 10. 122. So, to get this where we want it, we need to go to movement, go to the z, negative 122. And that will put up on your plate the rest of the print that you need. So, everything else that's underneath the plate here, it doesn't care about. It won't, it'll ignore that when it slices. Only what's up on your build plate area. Now, this is kind of the only time you can get away with this is with your Z being under the plate. A lot of times it doesn't like it. You can't have it in or out of the left or right side or front or back of the plate. But under the plate, you can get away with it. So, basically all you got to do at this point is slice it which so one thing about slicing this I do these with a raft when I'm slicing it um, how do I want to say this when I'm slicing a piece what happens is there's no bottom so it's only going to be the walls and what infill continues up from this point so I like to put a raft under this just to give it better be, better plate adhesion um, when I do this because honestly and I'll show you guys here now that I've sliced it and you can see it's very little left on my build part that you saw in my hand but when you cut this down and we'll try to go down as low as we can and you can see the raft poking through here so there's nothing in this mill to help hold the infill or anything like that and my infill is a bit higher I worked on a different model so it's up a bit more so that just kind of helps hold everything in place, gives you better adhesion, make sure you're going to get your second build. And that's pretty much all you got to do. Slice it, print it, and then you can take it back to your original failed model, size it up, and glue it together. That's really all that there is to getting this model back. As long as you have that original positioning and saved in an STL, you can get away with this. You sometimes can get away with it with the G-code too. Um, oftentimes, I'll leave Cura open while I go through a print with the model on the plate just to see what's going on with it to come back and do it. But it's really kind of a simple thing. You do the measuring on the model, come back here, do the negative in the movement, and you can usually print the rest of what you're after. And in this case for me, as I said, I'm going back to the Mandalorian armor, trying to finish the upper body because, well, the end of season one, what did he get? He got the jetpack. So, Stick around if you're curious about that, because I will be printing the jet, the jetpack model will be coming on. This one is from Mos Sizlak. Um, he has a really great comprehensive model set of the Mandalorian armor, top to bottom. Um, really impressed with this guy's work. So I chose the, the jetpack from his kit um, to try to print, and that's what the piece I'm working on here. Um, and I wanted to show that you know it is possible to continue a. A print even though it failed so failure <laughs> failures happen we all experience it but you know what there's ways to get the stuff back and if you're willing to instead of start completely over put in a little bit of extra work with some with some glue and some sanding and stuff like that you can continue on a print and hopefully save a little bit of money so hope you guys enjoy let's hop over to the fin the final pieces here and actually I'm gonna show you a small time lapse of the fail and this one here in a second so we're gonna go through that print and then as you guys can see, um, from the even the intro, I could set it on there. All I got to do is glue it on, and away we go. But join us next time as we also have the Mandalorian Armor Jetpack video coming up in the season. So let's hop back over to the workbench. Alright guys, that little bit of work at the computer, you saw a short time lapse of me getting my two pieces. Now all it is, is you get them right in place, and now we just got to adhere it and get rid of that little seam. So yeah, there's a little bit of a seam, but you know what, this is a bigger project of a, of, 
that you're going to see coming to the channel. This is one piece of it that I finally got tired and went back and I'm going to finish my Mandalorian armor. So this is just a small sample of what you might think may be coming up if I'm building something this big. So if you have a guess, leave it down in the comment bone below, but a little bit of glue, a little bit of filler, a little bit of sanding, you saved your piece. So some may find this useful. Some may be like, eh, just start over. But for some of us that just want to get it done, here's a way to do it. So hope you guys enjoy. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video.